So, there is a man in America called David Goggins, who's an ex-Navy SEAL, an ultra runner, and I think it's fair to say, a man who is pretty comfortable with pain. But you got shin splints and stress fractures? No, you don't. You got sore legs. Get out of your head and stay hard. Now, amongst his many achievements, Goggins came up with the rather foolish idea of running four miles every four hours for 48 hours, which might sound insane to most, but it has built up a bit of a cult following online. And well, me being me, I decided to take it one step further. My darling, you with a headband, you are different gravy. So I'm regrettably gonna spend the next four days running four miles every four hours. And yes, I did say four days. Stress. I sent my body into a bit of a spiral. Uh. Five, four, three, two, one. Off I go. Minus this. Okay, so first three miles done, and as I'd like to expect. I'm feeling pretty solid, no real sense of fatigue. Good news at this stage, but I am starting to dwell on the magnitude, long-term implications of having begun such an event. But nonetheless, everything's feeling solid as it should. Okay. First run complete, I'm getting some electrolytes on board as will very quickly become tradition the norm if you will there is a supermarket just down the road that i'm gonna go and get some food from and just get a bit of a rhythm there i did have a whole load of pre-made meals that i was going to bring with me and put in this lovely fridge just here but i left them at the house so we're gonna have to go and get them at some point Okay, so about to head off for run number two. It is 7.59. We are following the pattern of 4 p.m., 8 p.m., midnight, 4 a.m., 8 a.m., midday, repeat, essentially. So I'm going to head off now. I'm going to give this to you, and I'm going to start this. Okay, so halfway through round two, and the wind has really picked up, roads and congestion has quietened down, so this is a good taste of what's to come. First bit in the dark, really enjoying the peacefulness of it, and just settling to a rhythm. Okay, run number two done, and I'm having a bowl of cereal. I'm gonna shower, and I'm gonna go back to the house to get the nutritious ready meals that I have pre-prepared that are gonna go in the fridge, and mean that I don't need to have bowls of cereal on day one. That's more of a day three, day four sort of replenishment thing. I think we can all agree. But feeling solid, temperature's manageable, wind is pretty intense, but as I've said already, onwards, and downwards. I have an enormous amount of respect for David Goggins. His military achievements, everything he's achieved since are phenomenal. His books read exceptionally well, and his take on resilience, I think, is one that is broadly applicable to the comfort of the modern world. I especially think that what he's created with the 4x4x48 challenge is a great way for people to enter into something uncomfortable in a clear structure with a clear global community that really brings that message to life. So the idea behind the challenge is simple. You run four miles every four hours for 48 hours, totaling 48 miles within a 48 hour period. Essentially, the challenge is to break up the distance, which means that the challenges of sleep, hydration, nutrition, discipline, planning are all thrown in the mix. And I think that's a fantastic way to unpack the day-to-day -day challenges of day-to-day -day life and make it more than just running from A to B as a certain distance. And if I had a dollar, a pound, for every time somebody has requested that I give this a go, I would have about 63 pounds, give or take. However, it's never really been something that has drawn me in that much because through my background and experience in ultra endurance events, I feel I've sort of crossed the threshold into what this challenge aims to achieve in my own experience. So it's never really been something I've wanted to commit the time to. So here we are, about to double it.
Okay, so a blustery, chilly run number three is about to begin. Okay, so midway through lap number three, and just before I set off, there was a bit of tiredness setting in. So it's just gone midnight now, and hoping to get first batch of sleep once I get in. So I pre-made some pizzas to get them down as soon as I get through the door and get some water on board, get to sleep, and try and get into a bit of a pattern of sleeping overnight and sort of working through the day and carrying that for as long as I can until my cognitive ability is reduced to zero, which I'm sure will happen. It's more a matter of when. Time is currently 3.47 and that's first snooze out of the way. I'm not going to call it a sleep because it doesn't feel like it was. So I haven't actually ran yet. So can I say the first one's out of the way? Probably not, but we're going to head out in about 10 minutes to minimize time getting cold outside and get a bit more water in me, maybe get some carbs in me and head out the door. And run number four complete in just under 40 minutes. That felt longer than previous runs. I think just so quiet out there that less things to interact with visually, but the peacefulness of it was quite pleasant at points. So swings and roundabouts, you can probably hear my asthma's flared up a little bit. So gonna make sure to have a wee puff of my inhaler before I head out the door each time. But we are one eighth of the way through. That doesn't make me feel any better. Okay, first night survived. I'm feeling a little bit croaky and groggy, as you can hear, but no choice but to crack on. So that, I will do. Round five, complete. Conveniently placed by the lovely coffee shop and bakery. So, Started tired, daylight's made a huge difference. I just feel much more awake now. So I was actually gonna consider going back to bed after this, but I'm just gonna get into the pattern of after the 8 p.m. run, sleep, after the midnight run, sleep, and after the 4 a.m. run, sleep. I'm trying to keep that as the pattern that we hold over the next couple of days, as I think that's gonna be most sustainable. So job done on this case, lots more work to go. 39.16, four miles complete, coffee time. Okay, midday, round six, same place. Same lap, let's go. And we are a quarter of the way done. Run number six, another four miles complete. I have come indoors and I have showered. I'm feeling refreshed. And I'm gonna do that after every single run now. I was doing it every two, but I start to feel my skin getting a bit irritated, a bit dry, a bit sort of puffy and horrible. So I'm just gonna shower every time, cleanse my soul, cleanse my skin and move on. So I have myself some smoky paprika, chicken, potatoes and spinach, which I'm going to consume. I'm then gonna crack on with a bit more work. Was working between sort of nine and 12 12 this morning and I'll do the same in this next slot and then the next slot before the 8 p.m. run where I will then try and sleep in the sort of three periods where it is dark to somewhat exist like a normal human being for these four days. Somewhat. So that's me 24 hours deep into this challenge and so far so good whether that remains to be the case time will tell but the laws of compounding interest do seem to point towards the fact that this is going to get steadily worse 
and worse and worse. So I don't want to get lulled into a full sense of security, but so far, so good. Everything's feeling solid physically, mentally, I'm all there. Yes, I'm a little bit tired, but who could have seen that coming? On top of my nutrition, everything's really steady, really rhythmic. I will admit, if I'm being completely critical, that last run there was the only time I felt a little bit out of control with my heart rate, but the average came in at 146. So if you haven't already gathered, last night's snoozing wasn't fantastic, but that is part and parcel of this challenge. However, I can slowly feel my cognitive ability draining away so whether the work day that i have planned tomorrow is going to happen or not is yet to be seen but the rugby is also on scotland versus england is at 4 45 so i'm aiming to get in from the run at 4 41 ish quick shower a couple of non-alcoholic beers big meal Bosh. and probably fall asleep on the sofa let's be honest run number eight <laughs> Am I saying anything else? <laughs> okay, so 12.45, and that was frustratingly dull. So what I did before this one was go a different route, but more elevation, more people to dodge, more ankles to potentially snap. So I thought, you know what, overnight I'll just stick to the laps here. But I am thinking psychologically, I might change the approach and go two miles out, two miles back across a variety of routes over the next couple of runs, just because I'm starting to feel that tiredness set in, boredom set in, and it's gonna get tough. It's gonna get tough. So I'm gonna get showered, get a little bit more food in me and get straight back to bed. some students who are walking home getting the feel like oh my god the joggers are out already so for a bit of context on myself and why events like this are so important to me i committed to a series of charity events from 2018 to 2020 to raise funds and awareness for Movember and men's mental health. To date, we've raised just over £100,000, which I'm immensely proud of. But along the way, I have seen the value, the reward, and the personal development that comes with putting yourself outside of your comfort zone, really taking on something that scares you, and having to figure it out as you go. And for those of you that have been around the channel for a while, or for those of you that might be new around here, you can go back and watch the video. Most recently in September, I did a double Ironman Distance Extreme Triathlon, the Double Brutal, which was a 7.6k swim, a 373k bike with 6,000 meters of elevation gain, and an 84.4k run with 2,200 meters of elevation gain. So at this point, it seems like I double things. That was actually the best lap yet, and I'm quite elated, buzzing as a result of it. Average heart rate was only four beats per minute higher than a sort of comparable effort up until this point, and we were significantly quicker. So in the words of John Bon Jovi, oh. Okay, so Saturday evening, I have earned myself some rehydration in the form of a day's non-alcoholic lager. This is my second, and could well be my second of three. As well as that, I have myself a butter burger, which is chicken Kiev, so it's garlic mayo, cheese, chicken burger, and some other stuff, as well as a small handful of fries, and... England have just scored, which is good because I sound very English, but I was born and grew up in and live in Scotland, so whoever wins, I win.
Start the last full day and I feel terrible. I've slept really badly. My left foot is very sore. I probably didn't get enough water in before bed or as I've woken up this morning, but I've got time to fix that because I won't be sleeping after this one. So as, as, as they say in the trade, we... So as the saying goes, it is what it is. Oh, also, my Gucci's in pieces. hurting so essentially still moving at pace that's very sore it's kind of making me correct a little bit which means my ankle's a bit sore which means I feel like my gait's changed you might be able to see it in footage I don't know but fingers crossed as has been the past in the past few days sunlight in my eyes waking up staying up staggered food and drink means I'll feel better throughout the better very British for the rest of the day and then the last absolute heinous shift is tonight but as it stands, foot is manageable, it's uncomfortable, but it was no worse there than it was this morning, which if it stays that way, oh, I can't cross my fingers, they're too cold. If it stays that way, we should be okay. Quickest lap yet, 35, 44, average heart rate 147. So I am getting quicker and more efficient, but I am feeling worse and worse lap by lap. So swings and roundabouts. This part of the day is the best where I feel most awake. I bet for you watching, I look a lot better than I did this morning. I feel a lot better than I did this morning, but I feel worse at this time than I did yesterday. So the compound effect is pretty significant, but yeah, just having the gaps between the runs rather than having to worry about sleep makes it so much more calm and easy to manage. Foot is holding up, it's not getting worse. So fingers crossed it stays that way. But I mean, you know what this looks like at this point. And the best part is we are three quarters of the way through with just under 24 hours to go. So chef's kiss. Final 8 p.m. run then. This is just what I do now. Brilliant. Can't even open the door. Oh no. <laughs> Goodbye. A fair reflection of my current cognitive ability. Best run yet, as you can see on screen, 32.46, average heart rate 154. I am somehow adapting to this really quite well and that is the best, my stride, my breathing, my temperature has felt since we started this, which is really quite strange, and I feel in a very severe false sense of security, and I'm now buzzing, and I was planning on sleeping in this section, so I might have ruined that, because I don't really want to get to the point where I'll only get like an hour's sleep, because then it'll be such a grind to get out of bed, but I'm also thinking if I only need to wrestle out of bed twice rather than three times, that makes the remaining portion of this a little bit easier because that is the hardest part of this challenge. But what a buzz, I cannot believe I managed to open up so well there, which makes me excited to see, can I get a little bit more on that tomorrow morning? Because I'm gonna take it easy overnight because I'm gonna get some fluids in me. I'm not gonna have too much food so I can actually digest before I'm sleeping and then just top off on liquids and electrolytes overnight in between sleep because I found that eating just affects my sleep and digestion and general GI tract too much. So I've got a strategy but it's been compromised by how good that run felt, so swings and roundabouts. Oh, so it's just gone. Just gone four, and I feel rough. So just about to head out the door, but get a bit more water in me before I go, because 
Oh, I've been very, very sweaty for the two hours that I've tried to sleep effectively as well. So definitely catching up with me now. Oh, glamorous. I've just taken half a mile to walk to psychologically reset. I've got on my own head a little bit about the tiredness. I just feel absolutely done in. My gooch area, I was gonna say for want of a better phrase, but let's be brutally honest at this point, feels like it's bleeding. I just, just got really frustrated there. and just know that this is the first bit of walking I've done of the whole thing. I know this is the time to, to use it right in the depth of the night. And just, I can already feel myself calming down which is great, but at 0.65 of this lap, I'm gonna go again and run it through. I knew when I got out of bed this time, it was a little bit different. Just the sweatiness and the discomfort that I was feeling in that last little sleep was horrible. I think just general stress. Yeah. I sent my body into a bit of a viral uh, right. Go on. That uh, will definitely go down as the toughest yet. Well, I hope. Oh, bleak. Bleak. Leroy Jenkins. The penultimate countdown. Da, da, da. Yep, last time I'm gonna have to set an alarm and wrestle myself out of bed, which is a very, very exciting feeling. I do feel pretty beaten up and pretty done in, so. Whilst it's very close, it also feels yet so far. So I'll get through this and see you on the other side. Yes, Garmin, I know you are suggesting that I rest. That is unfortunately not within the rules. If my legs feel up to it, I might send this one. But the likelihood is they won't, so we'll see what happens. Uh, pace is fine, job done, but the wheels feel like they've fallen off. My calves and ankles are just minced, which is funny because in theory, the actual distance, I'm not, condi I'm not conditioned to 100 miles at the moment, so to be fair, the degradation's about right. But I think the stopping and restarting of my ankle joint, my calf structure and everything going on just means there's a lot of like added stress with the peaks and troughs of demand but beautiful morning, crisp, lovely sunrise, lots of people to observe and get caught staring at because I'm quite spaced out. And penultimate one done. I uh, didn't have anything in my legs as I flippantly suggested I might do if I was to then send it, but alas, not today. So part of the reason that I'm doing this challenge is to tip my proverbial hat to David Goggins as he is a savage in the modern world and his literature has shared some unique insights with people that have engaged with it. But there are a few things that I don't necessarily agree with. 
So whilst I'm a huge advocate for exposing our vulnerabilities, developing our resilience and committing to difficult tasks, I do believe it's worth really highlighting the traumatic experiences that David Goggins has experienced in his younger years and in the military and why his experience and his life message and the way he approaches things now are a result of those experiences. So therefore, trying to mold ourselves on his experiences into our own might not be the most refined way to do it for the individual. So with that in mind, I think it's important to take the top line message from Mr. Goggins himself, and that is to embrace discomfort and commit to difficult things because we will be better for it. But it's important to look at that through the lens of your own experience because that's where you as an individual can develop yourself and why the challenge, the event that I'm doing out there over the next couple of days is so valuable as a way to discover those things about yourself. I haven't been exposed to the hardship or difficulty that Goggins has, but I would like to think that the credibility of the things I've achieved over the years put me in a position where it's fair to say I have a high tolerance for willing suffering and ultra endurance events and putting myself in uncomfortable situations and coming out the other side. And I do firmly believe that we should manage when we're putting our foot to the floor and when we're taking our foot off the gas a little bit from an individual point of view. Managing our mental health, understanding ourselves and being analytical about how we respond to things is an important component of our entire well-being. And that's where I, I disagree with the videos of Goggins running the day after the Moab 250 saying that if he's not running the next day, he's not working hard enough because that can develop a negative association with personal achievement and personal development. And one of the things that really struck me, whether it was a PR stunt, whether it was marketing or not, was Goggins holding up his most recent book and saying, I'm not proud of many of my, many of my achievements, but I'm proud of this. And the thought that somebody with such an illustrious career wasn't proud of their achievements makes it seem to me that potentially the ideology in which he is existing is not the healthiest of ideologies to exist within. So I'd encourage you to be proud of your achievements, know when to put your foot to the floor, know when to take it off the gas, but to charge towards difficult things and embrace discomfort because that means you'll have a much more refined understanding of when to do exactly that. And we are about to finally knock this on its head and we have come to a change of location. This is Arthur's Seat, which for those of you that have watched the channel for a while will know I have cycled round and ran round a whole load in the past. So I thought we'd finish with an iconic location at the top of Edinburgh's most prolific extinct volcano. There aren't many to choose from and enjoy what is quite a pleasant day. So I'm going to get the dog sorted, handed over, get my last bits ready and set off very soon. Music